Egypt. It's 7 p.m. here on the East Coast, and Congress is still in limbo. The House adjourned earlier today after failing for a sixth time in the past two days to elect a speaker. Closed-door negotiations with some GOP members started shortly after that. The House will reconvene in one hour. Votes for Kevin McCarthy are slowly dwindling. As a reminder, 218 votes are needed to win the speakership. He started yesterday with 203. During all three votes today, he was down to 201. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian has more. In three straight votes, a speaker has not been elected. A speaker has not been elected. A speaker has not been elected. A speaker stalemate on the House floor, with GOP leader Kevin McCarthy still unable to secure the gavel. How are you going to get more votes, sir? We said we're talking. The group of nearly two dozen lawmakers who oppose McCarthy hanging strong, repeatedly nominating Florida Congressman Byron Donalds as an alternative. What is it that you want? Well, I think one of the key things is, is that, you know, we have a lot of Republicans that have worked hard to come here on Capitol Hill. So what we don't want to see a repeat of is the same old Washington. In a bid to boost McCarthy's chances, former President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence took to social media in support of the California Republican, but that didn't seem to sway hardliners. The president needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. Even some of McCarthy's supporters seem to agree. If he doesn't uh, get the uh, necessary support, um, this can't go on forever, and he needs to look at uh, uh, stepping aside. One name that has emerged as a possible backup candidate, McCarthy's deputy, Steve Scalise of Louisiana, though it's unclear if he could garner enough support. Sure, it looks messy. But democracy is messy. In the meantime, House business remains at a standstill, a stark contrast to this rare bipartisan event today in Kentucky with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and President Biden. To be able to have a Congress that can't function is just embarrassing. We're the greatest nation in the world. How can that be? And CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins me now from Capitol Hill with more. So, Nicole, do we have any sense of what negotiations are happening within the GOP right now? Well, we know that the House adjourned a short time ago, and so in this period, uh, there are negotiations happening behind closed doors. In fact, uh, Leader McCarthy is meeting uh, with some of his uh, top detractors. Uh, you know, some have said that uh, things are going well. Others have come out, uh, like Matt Gates, uh, still criticizing uh, the leader. So it's hard to get a read on whether or not any real progress is being made. But I think there is a lot of hope being instilled in this process that uh, throughout these discussions there can be some type of resolution put forth. Otherwise, some really difficult decisions will have to be made. Uh, one uh, Republican, Kevin Buck of Colorado, told me if the leader can't really resolve things uh, with uh, some of these members in this set of negotiations that he should potentially uh, consider stepping aside. Uh, other members like Byron Donalds, who was actually nominated as an alternative uh, to uh, Leader McCarthy to be speaker and got about 20 votes. Uh, he told me uh, that he hopes that these discussions tonight uh, will be fruitful and he was hopeful uh, that things will uh, resolve themselves, uh, if not tonight, certainly within the next day or two. So uh, we'll see. Hope still springs eternal here. And as you know, the House will reconvene uh, shortly. And so we'll get a better sense of uh, whether or not uh, the ball will move forward here. Yes. Yeah, so in the meantime, the House can't be sworn in and cannot start working until a speaker is elected. So Nicole, what are the potential ramifications of this delay? Well, there are quite a few ramifications. I mean, you know, the most obvious ones is the government kind of grinds to a halt, you know, for all the coverage I've done on the Hill over the years. You know, this is kind of another version of a government shutdown, if you will, although it's more specifically concentrated in the House because, you know, members can't get sworn in and they can't start or organize uh, their committees. And, you know, at the end of the day, they can't legislate. They can't pass bills. So, in essence, the work in the House chamber has uh, grinded 
grinded to a halt. And so uh, that being said, it does have a more broader implications for people at home. You know, all these newly elected members who are excited to be here on Capitol Hill. And this was supposed to be, a, you know, their first week on the job. Uh, they because they can't get sworn in, they can't even get their offices up and running. Their staffs can't access some of their emails. They can't provide constituent services if someone were to call their office and reach out because they need something. So, uh, you know, that is one uh, implication. And then, you know, there are other things. We have Republicans who are part of the Intelligence Committee who held a press conference this evening who said, for instance, they can't get briefings on national security matters. They can't go to the secure part of the Capitol where they can see, you know, intelligence documents and, and the like. So it does have some uh, real implications out there, even if people aren't uh, paying attention to, you know, the play by play here in Congress. Yeah, it, it's a really important reminder, Nicole, of the work that does take place oftentimes sort of behind the scenes. All right, Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill for us. Nicole, thank you. You bet.